let's look at our triangles in a little more detail. So we're going to review and we're going to look at similar triangles. Now, if two triangles are similar, this means that they have all of the same angles. So the corresponding angles are the same. So in this triangle, angle A and angle E are the same color in here. So we would know they're the same, tr same length, the same measure. Angle B and angle G and angle C and angle F are the same. So what that means is that the ratio of their sides are equal to each other. So the ratio of their sides, so if we take the length of AC, and we're going to say line segment AC, and we divide that by EF, that ratio has to be the same as the ratio for AB divided by EG, corresponding sides, which also has to be the same as the ratio for BC over GF. And remember, similar triangles, all it means is that the sides are different lengths, but they've been increased by the same amount. So if the original side here was 1, and you double it, we make this 2, that means we double all the other sides. And that just tells you from that ratio right there. So we don't want to confuse similar triangles with congruent triangles. Now, if two triangles are congruent, what this means is not only are their angles the same, but their lengths of the sides are the same. So two triangles are congruent if all the sides are the same and all of the angles are the same. And in this diagram down here, we can tell the sides are the same because they have, and they, like we look here, we have two little lines and two little lines, which means those are the same length. This line, this line, same length, these three and these three, etc. So we know that these two triangles are congruent. Now, if triangles are congruent, what we can do is we can do a lot of other calculations with them. But if you recall, and again, this might be something that you don't remember because it's been a while, is we don't have to prove or show all the sides are equal to make the classification to, to say that angles are congruent. We can look at just specific properties. So here's how we can determine whether triangle is congruent. We have these congruency properties. So we're going to go over these in a little more detail. If we have side, side, side. So if we have two triangles and all of the sides correspond to each other, like in this example, then if that's true, then we can say these two triangles are congruent. So, and the property would be side, side, side. Now, if we were making that statement, we would write this, and if you remember, we would write this as triangle ABC, and if we have congruent, we have this little symbol. It's an equal sign with a squiggly line under it. And that means congruent. And now what we have to do is when we make this statement of congruency, we have to go in the same order that we did for the original triangle. So we went A, B, C. So we went A, and from A we went to B, go following along the little lines with the three. So we'd have to say, starting at A, or starting at X, we'd go to Y along that same line. So we would say that this triangle is triangle X, Y, Z. Just making sure we go in the same order. So that is how it would look if you were uh, having to write whether the triangles are congruent. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ by side, side, side. Now, we don't always have the side. Sometimes we have the angle. Here's another congruency. Side, angle, side. So, and again, what we want to do is we want to go in an order, side, angle, side. So we start at A, and we can go side, angle, side. That's the same over here as side, angle, side. 
So we would say these triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. Well, here's another one. Angle, angle, side. So if we go, uh, starting here, we'll start at C. We go angle, angle, side. And notice how I'm always going either clockwise or counterclockwise. I can't go angle, angle, and then jump aside and get over to here or go angle, angle, then side. You always have to go either clockwise or counterclockwise. So we start at C and we go angle, angle, side. And here, angle, angle, side. Those triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. The last one is angle, side, angle. Angle, side, angle. Angle, side, angle. So those two triangles are congruent. And we could make this statement that triangle ABC is congruent to X, Y, Z for all four of these triangles. So we're going to have to know those. Now, let's make a note here. There is one property that is missing, and it does not determine congruency. Angle, side, side. If you have angle, side, side, your triangles may be congruent, but that isn't a proof. That doesn't verify they're congruent. So in this case, we have angle, side, or sorry, we have angle, side, side. Angle, side, side. We would have to do something else to determine whether these triangles are congruent. Either find another angle or find another side, but angle, side, side does not verify congruency. So, as it says here, don't be an ass when you're trying to verify congruency. Angle side side is not a property of congruency. Now, once we have determined that two triangles are congruent, then we can make statements about each part of the triangle, meaning the corresponding angles are congruent. So we use this form of CPCPC, which stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. CPCPC. If that's true, then we could say that we know every single angle and every single side are the same. So if we look back at um, what we're doing over here, if we have ang or side, 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 we verified that these triangles are congruent. If they're congruent, then we could say that angle Z is equal to angle C because congruent or corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. As well, B has to equal Y, C, P, C, T, C, same reason. So we don't have to prove everything in every triangle once we have congruency determined.